So what happens when you completely fill a carburetor full of JB Weld and then put it on the flow bench? Well, apparently, really good things. Project XMC, carburetor, YouTube, whatever. Test results are in. Let's go over them. Now, in case you have not been following the XMC JB Weld, well, JB Weld was just the last step, but the XMC Carburetor Extremely Modified Carburetor XMC, see what I mean? Yes, you spell extreme with an X. Okay, but doesn't matter. If you have not been following along to this build, and uh, it's been a little while, what we are attempting to do is do a bunch of crazy modifications to this carburetor. This is a 600 Holly uh, 4160, actually. It was a, a, a no, vacuum secondary. Start life as a 600 CFM carburetor. And we have been tinkering on it, doing our magic to it, you know, just coming up with bizarre ways to make it better, i.e. JB Weld which I'll give you a close-up look at in a second, for those who haven't seen it. This is in collaboration with another YouTube channel, Joseph Nowak. He is the one, the mastermind, the brains behind this operation, actually flow bench testing this stuff and coming up with the raw numbers. So please, there's a link in the description to his video right there about it. Go watch that first and then come back and we'll go over because this is going to be a reaction to his video his findings and please leave a like and a comment because without him this whole series could not be possible so give him some appreciation for me if you would but back to the carburetor it's it, it performed better than expected now what we have here is the final well not the final the last stage of this project that we've done filling it with jb weld as you can see but before that all we did was we took the stock carburetor right with the choke tower and everything we had him flow test it to get a baseline i got it back okay when i got it back what i did was we did the butterflies up as you can see we uh, contoured uh, well knife edged essentially the butterflies okay and thinned down the throttle shaft just a little bit not too much we cut off the choke tower okay we ported the choke tower entrance you know we we flared it out so it wasn't just a you know cut square it was actually flared out all around it and we kind of messed with, around with the uh, Oh, air bleeds, thinning those down, and stuff like that. We sent that off to get tested. We picked up, from those modifications, 84 CFM of airflow through the carburetor just by doing that. Now, that was impressive. That was a good for first chunk. And booster signal went up as well. So after that initial success, I wanted to see if I could make booster signal the top priority on here i wanted to try and force the boosters to have a better signal uh, these are straight leg boosters okay uh, they come stock with a tube going uh you know across the booster so one of the things we did was we took that out obviously as you can see and we polished the booster internals so we flared this top out okay i flared the bottoms out i don't think you're going to be able to see that oh you might be able to see the bottom of the booster there was a lot of meat left on there so what i did was i flared the bottom flared out the bottoms of the boosters as much as i could to try to get a really radical uh, venturi effect going through the booster and all this JB Weld. Now the reason we did the JB Weld, not only to just kind of streamline the entry point for the air to go in, 
More importantly though, I wanted to constrict the booster opening. Now, the boosters sit above the Venturi. The Venturi's down here, the booster's up here. So airflow is able to come around the booster, underneath it, and down through the Venturi. I thought that limited the uh, signal going to the booster. You want the air to have to pass through the booster, or on the outside around the booster. You don't necessarily want air to be able to go you know, in like this, you want it to have to affect that booster in some way, shape, or form. So all I did was I JB welded around the booster and, you know, flared it out as much as I could, right? Made it, you know, look kind of presentable. But I wanted to tighten up all this area surrounding the booster in the hopes that forcing the air to go down past the booster will increase booster signal. What else did I do? Well, as you can see, I covered up the air bleeds and I covered up the uh, uh, squirter nozzle. Now, there is a squirter nozzle in there and it is, you know, the holes are free so it would still squirt fuel. This is non-functional prototype. This is strictly for airflow. This is not intended to actually go on a car. Whatever we learn here, we will take and we will apply to an actual carburetor to test on a car. See? But this is prototyping. But we covered that up and just, you know, just to try to make it justifiable to cover that up, I added an air bleed right in the accelerator pump discharge uh, circuit so that you can still technically limit the amount of fuel going through the discharge nozzles without having to change the orifice size on the nozzle itself you simply change the orifice size there uh, the air bleeds we were going to move to the actual metering block we, instead of having the holes here we would move that out here to the metering block is how i'm justifying that what else did i do i quartered off see I quartered off. I added these two right here. Uh, uh, walls, essentially. Well, that, uh, actually, that, that's what they are. They're walls. Walls of JB Weld. We added walls here. Again, trying to limit the amount of where the airflow can come through, right? So we eliminated this section here where airflow could come and not go directly past the booster. Now the airflow has to go directly past the booster. And last but not least, what we did, I'm going to open these butterflies. Oh yeah, there you go, that, that looks a little nicer. Last but not least, what we did was, well, yeah, I added little ramps. It's kind of hard to see, but if you can look right here, right towards the booster i added these big humps these ramps kind of going towards the booster now why did i do that to help direct the airflow directly to the booster see see so that airflow is going to come around catch this ramp and it is going to directly ramp it towards the booster was the prevailing theory so i did all that and we sent it off to Joseph Nowak to go test. And the results are in. Now remember, my goal was booster signal with this whole contraption. Because I want, you know, the boosters to have a really strong draw. This is only a 600 Holly, but I'm envisioning, you know, if this was like a 1000 CFM carburetor, the more draw you have on the booster, the more street friendly it's going to be. So you could have a thousand, you know, 1050, you know, Dominator, well, you know, aside from the fact that Dominator is not configured like this, but you get my point. You can have a really big CFM carburetor for the strip that performs, but if it's got really good booster signal, then you can actually use that carburetor on the street and it will have good street mannerisms. The big thing with uh, the bigger carburetors, the bigger CFM, is that low airspeed, low depressions, 
the actual signal to the booster is not very strong, so they're not very street friendly. That, that was kind of the prevailing theory there. I was willing to sacrifice, because you got to imagine, adding all this JB Weld is constricting the actual, you know, available space for air to get through. So I was okay with giving up a little bit of CFM. We gained 84 CFM over the original. So I was okay with giving up a little bit of CFM if it meant getting that much more booster signal. We ended up actually gaining CFM again an additional 20 20 odd CFM remember go watch the video for yourself to get the actual raw you know confirmed numbers and I, he has a spreadsheet and everything so it's really neat so go watch that to really get the analytical you know data points but we gained 20 odd CFM I think it was what 27 22 CFM Additional, so remember, 600 Holly, we are over 100 CFM versus stock with all of this. And not only that, our goal for booster signal was a complete success. We have twice the booster signal as a comparative, a comparative carburetor. From what I understood, from what they were talking about, they were saying that the amount of booster signal compared to the amount of depression that it was being flowed at is twice what they usually see in a carburetor. So this has twice the amount of booster signal comparative to its, um, um, not CFM per se, but comparative to the amount of air getting drawn on it as a typical carburetor that they usually flow bench test. And they flow benched, you know, several different times. I mean, they they work on stuff themselves, right? They're not just only flow benching my stuff. They got a whole channel with stuff they do on it. Wow. That is impressive results because you got to keep in mind, right? We are up 100 CFM, over 100 CFM, and we are double the amount of typical booster signal whilst retaining the exact same venturi diameter and the exact same butterfly diameter the actual holes the air is flowing through has not changed diameter the only thing that has changed is the opening of the carburetor that's the only thing and you've gotten that much of a difference Pat myself on the back for that one. I had a goal and I succeeded. But that just leaves the question, begs the question, really. What do we do with it now? This project is not complete. We still want to, you know, monkey around with it. And I still have ideas on what the next steps I'm going to do are. But I'm not completely concrete on exactly which direction I'm going to start in first. My initial plan is to take this 600 CFM throttle body and put a 750 throttle body on it, i.e. take this throttle body off, open up the actual diameter of the base of the Venturi, you know, widen out the base to fit the bigger butterflies on it. And I think that's the way I'm going to go first, because after that, then we can have a direct apples to apples comparison between the regular diameter base plate versus a larger diameter base plate. And it's larger by quite a bit actually. Uh, it, it's, it's not a subtle change, it's quite the change. So I think that will be very interesting to see. Uh, exactly what is that worth, right? After that, however, because after that, I want to mess around with the top again. Because it still boggles my mind that we were able to get that much CFM flow and booster signal gain. You know, both the same. I thought you either needed booster signal 
and lower CFM or more CFM and lower the booster signal, right? That was kind of my theory was all this JB Weld, yeah, it's great. And I tried to shape it as best as I could, but ultimately it was going to constrict the amount of airflow available to go through and thus lower CFM in the hopes of gaining more booster signal. Hell, we got both. Just one of which was far more than the other, booster signal, which was our goal. I want to still mess around with this top because in his testing, there was an outlier. And I believe it's this one right here. This cylinder bore, the booster signal out of this one hole was over 10 CFM more than the rest of them. And to be honest with you, I've kind of been eyeballing her, just trying to see, because, I mean, I did all this porting by hand, obviously. So, I'm trying to eyeball it to see exactly what the difference is between this and the rest of them. And I don't quite know. So, I'm going to be working on that. Because uh, it would be nice to have that much gain on the rest of them, too, because, well, you know... It, it can clearly be done, right? I just got to know what the heck's going on. And to be fair, the JB Weld porting job is not the greatest. I mean, I am not a professional. I am an amateur. Not only an amateur, but a lazy amateur. Uh, I got to a point where it's like, I don't want to work on this anymore. Here you go, you know? So there is quite a bit of improvement that can be done here. Uh... And I got some other plans, which I think I am going to keep to myself at the moment. But, wow. Just think about it. <laughs> think about what we've been able to accomplish with this. And this is not just for this carburetor. Like I said, this is a prototype. What if we took this stuff that we learned and applied it to an actual running carburetor to put on that thing? I mean, twice the booster signal? as a normal carburetor that's usually run, you know, on their flow bench. I'm thinking big CFM carburetors are going to be street friendly, uh, you know, in the coming future here. If only I can figure out how. I mean, I'm sure it's already, I'm sure there's already a company doing it somewhere, but, you know, new guy's garage right they don't have the charm that we do any i'm gonna stare at this thing a little bit longer but that's the update uh we're gonna start working on it again really soon like i said i'm gonna open up these throttle bores on the bottom and slap a 750 base plate on it and then we'll send it back and see what that does i'm kind of curious to see how much the actual just throttle bore itself is going to affect CFM and affect booster signal, mind you. Uh, well, about to find out. But until then, I'll catch you next time. Hey, look, look at the new garage, by the way. The setup. Got the car in here, right? I just moved. Most of you probably know, but some of you might not. So... You know, I got the engine sitting here, all my, you know, wall of tires. It's, it's kind it's, it's pretty snazzy, I'm not going to lie. It's no living room, but, you know, it's close. Mm -hmm.